today I'm going to tell you about the three states of matter. But first, I have a question for you. Do you know what matter is? If not, matter is everything that has mass or volume. Mass is the amount of matter in an object, and volume is the amount of space taken up by the object. Now, I'll show you how the molecules are packed up in the three different states of matter. First is the solid, then liquid, then gas. Oh, but before that, I'd like to show you some examples. For example, the silicon case is solid, this book, my watch, the marker, the board, most things around us are solid. Now coming to liquid. This soda is liquid, then this orange juice is liquid, and then even water is liquid. So now let's see how the molecules... Oh, and before that, I wanted to say gas too. <sighs> you cannot see gas, but you can breathe gas. Not gas really, but oxygen, and that's a type of gas. Now moving on to how the molecules are packed in three different states of matter. Let's see how it's packed up in solid. I'll write an S. The molecules are tightly packed up in a solid. I'll draw the molecules. All right, there might be a gap or two in this drawing, guys, but in real life, it's really completely packed up together, hugging each other. I'll draw a few more molecules and that would do it. There. Well, you might see a gap or two, but remember, it's completely together. Now coming to the liquids. I've made an L there, and in the liquid, it's a bit far apart. Something like that. That's why liquids can flow. Now coming to gas. It's really far apart. And there's no chance of collision between the molecules and gas. Now I'm going to fill in this table that will show the properties of solids, liquids, and gases. First, for the volume. In solids, it's fixed. In liquids, it's fixed. takes shape. And for gas, it spreads to take shape. Now coming to the density. In solids, it's high. In liquids, it's medium. low. Now coming to the ease of compression. How easily it could be compressed. For solids, it's low. For liquids, it's low. But for gas, it's high. Now coming to the ease of flow. For solids, it's no flow. For liquids, it's easy. And for gas, it's easy. 
easy peasy lemon squeezy. But I will just write very easy. Very easy. Now you can have a look at the table, everyone. Alright, so well, I taught I'd keep the chart, guys, but I needed some more space. So now we have a clean board here, and I'm going to tell you about the changes in the state of matter. Imagine, you took out a piece of ice, a piece of solid ice, within brackets S, then you let it melt outside in the room temperature. Melting point is at zero degrees Celsius. I'll write it in brackets. Then this solid ice, after I let it out to melt, it turns into liquid water, doesn't it? After that, I boil it. And boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. Then after that, evaporation takes place. And in evaporation, it's from liquid to gas. here is the major component. And the solute is the minor component. So a solution is made out of 
as solvent and solute. Solvent being the major one and solute being the minor one. For example, salt water. I'll just, let's just imagine this is a pile of water and these would be salt. Here, the solvent is the water and the minor component, that is the solid, is the salt. Now I'm going to tell you about physical and chemical change. First, I'll tell you about physical. Physical change is reversible and no new substance is formed. Examples are freezing and bo boiling. In freezing, if you put some water in the fridge, you get some ice, but you put that ice outside and you get the liquid, but you wished it was ice again. Then you put it back in the freezer and you get your same old ice. Boiling is a physical change because the molecular structure stays the same in the water and water vapor. Now I'll rub this out so I can write for chemical change. Now chemical change. and a new substance is formed. would be baking a cake and rust. So first, before you put the cake together, but you have all the ingredients separated, like the butter, the eggs, and everything. It's a separate thing, right? But when you mix it and it's ready to eat, you cannot separate the ingredients again. In rust, suppose you washed some metal or something, and the next day you see rust on it when you leave it to dry. You cannot get rid of the rust anymore. I hope you all enjoyed my video, everyone. Please keep on doing it experiments and thank you for watching please watch more subscribe bye